Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question that just came in. And that is, what is the connection between being stuck and having these emotional triggers run your life? What is the connection with just feeling like you're just stopped, you're just stuck, you're blocked, you're at a plateau, you're not moving forward and you don't really know what it takes to move through and just be on with your life. So that's a great viewer question. And before we get started, I just want to give a super huge shout out to those of you who have recently donated to the Peace and Harmony channel. Thank you so much. It's great to hear from you. I am so glad you have found us. You found a resource a forum to discuss and process certain relationship dynamics that are really overwhelming, that leave you really puzzled, once again feeling stuck and not healed. And furthermore, even problematic for a lot of people is they keep finding themselves in repeated patterns and repeated um, situations where they're stuck. They're surrounded by a big wall, either a wall of people um, or a wall of emotion that keeps them stuck, that keeps them really isolated and feeling like there's no one to talk to or process this and kind of validate their feelings. So thank you so much. And absolutely positively, if this channel has been a resource for you and been a positive influence, please do feel free to participate and support the channel at the, piece, at the uh, PayPal Donate Now button here on the About page of Peace and Harmony. And... Yeah, so the situation, which is a great viewer question, is what is the connection between feeling stuck and your the triggers that are part of your daily living? So it's to understand both situations and how they work and why they are the way that they are. So when you are stuck, when you are feeling blocked, when you're in a relationship where you feel overwhelmed, you can't breathe, you're suffocated by pain, Basically, you have to tiptoe around. You have to walk on eggshells. You're afraid of this emotional landmine where all of a sudden this person is going to come out. They're going to blurt out. They're, they're going to yell. They're going to say certain things that get you in a reactive, disempowered state. That is known as a trigger. A trigger can have deep roots. It can have a deep history. It can go back to an original situation or situations which have set up this relationship dynamic to reoccur and reoccur time and time again. And it can be so intertwined and enmeshed with not only your emotions, your mood, your temperament, it also goes on to be part of your identity if it's left there to fester and not be worked through, not be dissolved, not be processed. So old feelings of hurt, of abandonment, of shame, of guilt are set up in the psyche, meaning kind of your psych, your emotional processing, oftentimes early on in your life. It could be when you're a child, a teenager, a young adult in your 20s, your 30s. It can also be repeated and reinforced, not only through this person, oftentimes who exasperates it, who tends to exploit this weakness and then get you triggered intentionally and deliberately time and time again, that's part of the problem where someone who is toxic, someone who is covert narcissistic, um, someone who is malignant narcissistic or psychopathic who re-triggers this, who sets up the trigger to begin with, in other words, there's they're part of the cause has created this effect of being triggered. So triggered means set up to feel reactive, to feel angry, to feel disempowered, to feel resourceless, to be agitated and aggravated time and time again, where all of a sudden you're down an emotional rabbit hole. You're down a downward, you're in a downward spiral. You're in an uncomfortable, undesired emotional relationship pattern where this person has you set up to go there and walk this emotional minefield time and time again. A trigger is something that bothers you. There's something that the person does or says, oftentimes intentionally, to prey upon your vulnerability, 
are cause you false accusations, fear, setting up this fight or flight, the cortisol reaction, the stress hormones, which are very damaging, very damaging and destructive. So it's to understand that there are certain physiological states, certain neurochemical wiring that are set up and reinforced, you know, six levels deep oftentimes, which are deeply set in the brain and the physiology, particularly that of the limbic system. The limbic system is your emotions. The limbic system is the older processing part of your brain, which is relegated to oftentimes very unconscious levels. Your emotions are energy in motion. So this is what empowers you. You can have negative emotions or positive emotions. However, a trigger is set set in an older limbic pattern. It's an old emotional pattern that has been set up oftentimes by somebody who wants to control or have power over you for reasons that serve them. For reasons that serve them, but does not serve you. It's designed to shut you down. It's designed to cast you to the relegation of isolation. You are not wanted here. Your input is not wanted. Me, me, me. It's all about the narcissist. And then oftentimes a team of malignant individuals who are part of that triggering, who then, you know, kind of are on the bandwagon. If you're in a workplace or a family where there's others to quote unquote emotionally recruit and become part of this triggering um, relationship pattern. Um, Families, work, you know, work environments are places where people pick up these emotional patterns. We are designed as social creatures to bond and have attachments. So it's to understand that there's, there's supposed to be, you're, you're not supposed to be alone, alone, alone. You're designed to have social connection. Mirror neurons, the, the neurons that have empathy and exercise empathy are part of your physiology. It's part of your inherent organic makeup. So it's important to understand that part of you is designed when you're communicating to have a mirror neuron effect where you pick up the wiring, the emotions, the body language of people who are around you. That's why I talk about how important it is to surround yourself with people who uplift and support and liberate you and to help you to think freely and be productive versus the other, you know, versus people who trigger and block you. So to block is to hit a stalemate, is to say that you, you know, that there's something negative that then upsets you and this other individual reinforces or there's an environmental influence that can reinforce you. The environmental influence can be a location, it can be a community, it can be a time of year, it can be the, the things that you hear that trigger you, on all of your senses, it can be food that triggers you, scents, emotions, things that people say that trigger you and can keep you blocked and stuck. So stuck meaning you cannot move through. You have just sort of a fight or flight or freeze, um, like Pete Walker says in his book, from survival to thriving. And I think it should be from survive. Yeah, it's from surviving to thriving and understanding complex PTSD. Um, he talks about sort of a freeze state. It's like a deer in the headlights. That is known as a block where you don't, you, you're not processing the situation. You can't move forward. You can't put one foot in front of the other. You can't put one fo- one word in front of the other. You can't process. You can't cope. You can't put them in their place. The situation in its place is just a wall. It's an emotional barrier. It's founded by self-limiting beliefs that are part of keeping that block in place. So you absolutely positively through words and through tools that you specifically that you learn here on the channel, you can move through those blocks, eliminate them, get through them, break through and eliminate those blocks from being part of your emotional vocabulary and your being state your emotional liberating be state. So who you are, who you are becoming, 
how you feel and your being in that moment. So we're getting really down to the roots. So the manipulator oftentimes will say things that are designed to trigger you, that are designed to leave you in this black state. It can be oftentimes not what they do, but what they don't do. So it's, it's you know, um, it may be greeting you and then leaving you. It can be ignoring you. It can be withdrawing of attention. It can be looks that are of disapproval, of um, sort of um, lack of interest. So words, you know, where they, you know, they interact and then shut you down where you're trying to talk. They might talk over you. Um, they might um, steal the show. They might speak louder. And then all of a sudden everybody's attending to them. They might um, treat you as if you don't know what you're talking about. They'll interject and come back with something that's designed to shut you down, um, keep you from talking, um, making, so in other words, talking about a situation that has made you uncomfortable, even in the family, you know, um, they're just trying to bring up something that you are trying to process and this person shuts you down as if you are unimportant, you don't matter. What, that you are irrelevant, that you are being, you know, too sensitive, um, that you were young and you should just move beyond it. They don't understand that part of this is having conversations or trying to remove the blocks with the people who have caused them. So part of the erroneous thinking and keeping things stuck is thinking oftentimes that you can have a conversation with the individual who is triggering you and think that, that they're going to all of a sudden apologize, see the light, see where they're wrong, that they're going to change. But that is oftentimes flawed thinking because purely people who are narcissistic, they, they, they feel that they are entitled and that they have the right to mistreat others. They just don't feel that they have done anything wrong. The psychopath who has limited activity in the prefrontal cortex they don't, they don't learn. They don't pick up on emotional cues. They don't experience emotions. They don't experience fear, love, attachment, um, communal, you know, humanity, um, love, these, you know, states, ah, they, they don't have, they don't experience these. So therefore, if they have violated others, they just think this is just how life is. You know, you're just one of my victims. I'm, you know, they, they, if anything, they will put on a persona to, you know, as if they're listening, but they will do it again and again and again. They don't feel that they've done anything wrong. The narcissist, they feel entitled. They don't feel that they've done anything wrong. So they're not going to be a great way or uh, direction for you to get closure and work through it. In fact, they're going to continue to violate. So it's to understand that these individuals are how they are. This is just what they do. This is business as usual for them. This is how they uh, work a dynamic to come out on top. This is just what they do. And if people fall for it, then it works for them and they continue to do it. So it's to understand that this is their tactic. You don't have to be subjected to their tactics. You don't have to be evaluated and conform to their judgment. That is how you get stuck in the quagmire, in the maze, in their puzzle and get blocked is because you are engaging with this energy. You are trying to interact and trying to uh, be have respect and have a forum or an opening where they're not going to allow because for them, there's a payoff to them blocking you. There's a payoff. They don't have to deal with your success. They don't have to deal with communication. They don't have to feel equal to. They don't have to feel part of. They don't have to be supportive. They don't have to be responsible. They can be irresponsible. They can be exploitative. They can live entitled. They um, do not have to learn. They don't have to deal with their own insecurities. They you know, are able to get off the hook when they manipulate others. So. There's usually a payoff that they're getting that they don't have to deal with something. They don't have to confront something within themselves. They don't have to feel vulnerable. They don't have to feel um, a sense of their own humility 
or humbleness. They don't have to be open to other people's perspective. They don't have to grow in that direction. They just begin to, you know, they, they just are taking the easy road out. And so they'll perpetuate that. So it's important to understand that to unblock yourself is to liberate yourself from adhering to their judgment. Stop the naming and labeling that you give to yourself when you're around them and begin to pull away and get distance and breathe into the relationship and just begin to feel safe and peace and oh, being okay and whole with just the way that you are. It's a B state. It's to say, okay, I'm going to exhale. I'm going to let the, all that negativity go and I'm going to let that negativity just go back to them and rest with them and allow their energy to be with them. I don't have to win. I don't have to battle. I don't have to explain and justify. I don't have to defend myself. I'm going to have what I have and what I have is enough and who I am is enough and who I am being and becoming is enough and I don't have to engage in and be evaluated and get into a conflict conscious interaction with these people. And I am enough and I am safe and, and I am okay with just being who I am. Despite all the evaluation and judgment and hostility and anger or negativity and overpowering control that these individuals or individual has created for me in my environment. So it's to say, I have a choice. I have a clearing. I am enough. And so it is. And with that, it'll allow me to get an unblock and flow in all directions that are calling me, that are liberating me. And even if it's on my own, that is okay. I can break free. I have what is required. And if, once I get into this self-belief state, once I believe enough and have enough faith and have enough trust and know that the road will rise to meet me, like that great Irish saying, I will go in that direction. I will ha hold my head high. I will put my shoulders back. I will breathe and I will have affirmations and physiological strength as I move through my day, my hour. I will know that I am and I am enough and I am complete and I am whole and I am growing and I will become and I will manifest and draw to my reality all that I need and more once I accept this open door to my reality. Once I accept and give permission to turn my emotional eyes away from the negativity and know that there are greater relationships in the brotherhood and sisterhood and the family of life that is past that open door, I welcome it now. I welcome my true mother, my true father, my true family, my true greatest self when I set forth on that path and I let go of the labels that have caused me to be triggered. I'm and I allow those to be released into the stratosphere, the quantum realm. I allow that to go back to the source. I throw it onto the the source and also the Christ consciousness, the divine intelligent consciousness, the the great quantum healer that is part of life, that is part of the divine intelligence, which is going to open more doors and it will amaze and shock and give me the true, awesome, sublime experience of freedom and life and support and happiness and joy of being once I, once I allow and I let that go and I stop those negative titles and negative naming, which are part of that triggering experience to be released and let go and to stop defining myself by the negative that has been created. I dispel that. I am getting rid of it. I no longer adhere to those negative labels. Those are erroneous. Those are flawed. They are wrought with false accusations. They are nothing. They are nothing but meant to silence and control. That, that's all they are. They're tactics that manipulative people use to confound and confuse and bewilder and create this cognitive dissonance 
which people cannot, you know, um, have a comeback or have a, you know, a human, normal human discussion. It's like a wall that people create to set you apart. So no longer am I, am I, you know, and to be, but for that wall to have life, you have to engage with it and you have to agree that you are that disempowered. You know, you have to agree to the wall for that wall to stay in place. So disagree with that wall. Just say, you know what? No, you, you just have to stop identifying and stop allowing that to be created in your heart and in the privacy of these videos to understand the cause that's created this effect and this trigger. And it's seeing it for what it is. It is just what it is. And then once you get distance and you're able to breathe your reality and breathe through your reality in knowing better, in being in knowing, K-N-O-W, it's a no state that you have, you know what it is. So once you have that knowledge, you cannot be made uncertain anymore. You cannot be made, made small anymore because you know you know better. So it's when belief meets that, that, that opportunity. It's when you see it through clear eyes. You now see the person for what they are. They now, you now see the setting for what it is. You now see the family for what it is. These people, these players who are taking this role. And once you see that, you'll realize that you don't have to identify with the negative roles that they're trying to set up for you. It's like, no, I'm not going to be lured in. I'm not going to be seduced by the negativity. I'm not going to be, you know, made unwise. I'm not naive anymore. I am not green anymore. I am not bewildered anymore. I am not disempowered anymore. I am not, um, on the coattails of these people. I'm not a passenger to this dynamic anymore. I'm not entering into it energetically like a, being a passenger. Um, and so this state of clarity, of balance, of harmony, of being giving this to yourself, this awareness and this freedom is very much like a very precious gift that you give to yourself the best gift ever, which is the gift of freedom, which is the gift of liberating which is the gift of the joy of being is when you can finally come into your own body. It's like an outer body experience when people are disempowered. They don't know that, you know, what's running their life. They feel that they are triggered. They no longer have the emotional mastery and regulation. They no longer own their own lives. They, they don't have that authority. And when they're around these people, these people basically are like, uh, pretending that they have authority over your life when you have authority over your life. So it's important to understand that you own the trillions and trillions and trillions of cell and energetic space, which is huge, you know, within your brain, within your own perspective, within what you enjoy and take in and interact in with life, you know, you finally can liberate that and begin to manifest and live in another state beyond the fight or flight once you really work through it and you understand the the narcissists the controllers the people who are psychopathic different human behavior how people behave the study of psychology the study of personality the study of abnormal psychology social psychology um uh you know social um, hierarchies, the way that the, all this neurobiology, neurophysiology, how it all coalesces and comes together, a, a synthesis with uh, quantum healing, um, all these different levels and layers of the brain, identity, emotions, there's a lot that goes into it to getting and liberating this. But I hope in the course of this video, you're able to identify and really come to that awareness, that acknowledgement and validation that you have your two feet and you can direct yourself through free will because oftentimes it's the eroding of free will that causes you to be triggered, you know? And so it's beginning to allow more free will and choice 
into that triggered state to say, instead of launching off into a tirade, I get quiet. Instead of reacting to this individual, getting quiet, closing your lips, breathing through the situation, not taking a step forward, but taking a step back, not looking at them, but turning your gaze away. Instead of giving them your heart, you pull back your heart. Instead of, you know, getting into a mental uh, backsliding of feeling and being uh, played with or being made subject to this individual and what they want from a situation, it's pulling back and making sure you know you have the capacity to then think and think about what you want in that you are not going to be made a loser or lose what you don't want because of this trigger. That you are set up for success and you will get what you want in life and in that situation. And then what is your next steps? You're being able to see clearly now and actually dream and move forward realistically versus this fantasy or um, oftentimes, you know, the grandiosity, which is a defense mechanism of the narcissist is oftentimes that they're living in grand grandiosity and hurt others and get away with it. So it's to stop it in its tracks. It's just to say, no, I know better. And then to have discussions within yourself, developing the vocabulary and the confidence and the self-trust and self-belief that you can then have conversations with others that aren't tinged with the trigger, that don't give you the identity of being unconfident, of having low self-esteem of not being able to interact, social anxiety, all those are no longer players in your day. You are empowered. You have a sense of knowing. So that it is oftentimes it's an emotion. It's not, it's un, it's not what you need. You need to unlearn these labels. So these labels that were designed to be a trap, see them for what they are. This was a trap. Wow. I'm not there now. This was designed to make me dismal, to make me melancholy, to make me feel stupid, to make me feel shut down, to silence me, to throw me off. It's like getting on an emotional bronco or whatever you call those horses that are like flipping around. They're just like, here, get on this emotional, uh, emo you know, uh, bronco and see if I can't throw you off. No, I'm not getting on that bronco, that emotional bronco. You know, where the guys are like, how can I ride it for five seconds and not get thrown off? I'm, I'm not doing that. That's like what a trigger is. It's like an emotional bronco where you're holding on and you're like, all of a sudden I've been thrown into this emotional, uh, you know, uh, spewing forth, which is like, why, you know, it's out of control. The malignant narcissist and the psychopath want you, unfortunately, to fall into this deliberate trap, which they lay out or this is part of who they are, part of their pattern. So literally you can forecast it. Literally, you know that these are stormy personalities when, you know, these, these people are the purveyors of the great, you know, emotional black cloud, you know, here they, here it comes. Here's the troublemaker. Here's the troublemaker. Here is the troublemaker. And then you see it for what it is and then you're able to know it and then you're no longer threatened by it but in then you're no longer threatened by what is within you you're no longer intimidated by yourself you're no longer afraid that of yourself or your emotions you know just crying you know for no reason yelling for no reason um getting yourself in an underspent or overspent situation getting yourself in situations where you've gone to the extreme you know you've You've um, made, um, you know, unsavory choices, bad choices. You know, bad choices no longer become attractive to you anymore. You become more mindful and aware, hey, you know, I don't need to do this to please this person or to give in. I no longer need to do that. And there's a feeling of growing. Like that little stalk now has like a little stronger fiber and it's now able to push through the ground a little bit more and push away that ground, that soil that was keeping it kind of under the surface. It's now peeking forth and I see it now. That's really what the personal growth is like. It's like a tiny embryo of a seed that's pushing forth through the soil. It's strong enough to push the soil away 
and it's peeking its little head out. And then pretty soon that head is going to now become a plant or whatever it is, i.e. that's like an analogy for you and your personal strength, your personal best, your happiness that is ongoing and chronic, that happiness and joy is pervading your being and you become stronger and stronger and stronger. So that little fresh little sprout is setting forth fresh ideas, fresh feelings, fresh feelings through all of your senses. That's why I recommend the resensitization that I discuss in my book. But that is how you break through. That is the feeling, know, and be in belief state. I hope these videos do help. It's your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. Pleasure. Enjoy.